I'm Laura. Welcome to Laura G Yoga. Today our yoga board is talking about Niyama number three, which is tapas. And tapas means self-discipline. It's this process of using your self-discipline and directing your energy in a certain direction so that there's this transformative process. And tapas is really strongly associated with the element of fire or heat, which is perfect because today in New Jersey it is very hot and humid. So we'll definitely have no problem sweating when we do our practice for tapas. So the heat of change physically that we build up during our practice, we can think of the Agni or the fire that burns within our belly. And this is where we get our motivation, it's where we digest our food, it is the way that we burn off negativity. It's the way that we let go of things that are clinging to us. If the fire isn't strong enough, then we can't burn through those things and we get weighed down by them. Whereas if our fire is too strong, we have a fiery personality and we get aggravated too easily and we can burn ourselves out by just overexerting ourselves. So we want to work on our practice with self-discipline to create a fire that's controlled but really strong and effective. So we know if you've ever had a campfire that when you start the fire it's really it's kind of a tricky process. It takes a good amount of skill and knowledge to be able to create the perfect way to start that fire and to have the right kind of fuel and to give it enough oxygen. Once you have that fire really burning you can throw almost anything onto it. You can throw wet logs and it'll eventually dry out and burn. So when you have a good healthy fire, you have the ability to burn through things much more effectively internally as well. If once in a while your diet isn't exactly spot on, then as long as you have that strong internal fire, probably won't be too detrimental. But if you're constantly putting bad fuel onto that fire, the results aren't going to be the greatest. So when we constantly give attention to our internal fire, it builds up this internal motivation. We get really good at pushing ourselves when we feel like we're tired or when we feel like we don't really have more to give. And that's a great way to make progress in certain areas of your life. I know when I was in school, when I was working toward my master's degree, I had a lot of days where I was exhausted, but I had a paper due, so I had to dig down really deep, and even though I wanted to take a nap more than anything, I had to pull myself together and push through and get that paper done or whatever my homework was for that night to work toward that goal. The end product was I gained a huge amount of knowledge in that process, but it was definitely a process that felt like a transformation through fire. It took a lot of effort, a lot of self-discipline. So those are the times in our life where we see the greatest transformation. It's when we go through that difficulty and we rise to that challenge. If we get used to always avoiding challenges or finding ways to make it easier, then that self-discipline and that internal motivation becomes weaker. That fire within us won't be as strong. But there is definitely a balance to that. We don't want to get to the point like I said before, where that fire is so strong or we're pushing ourselves so hard for so long that you end up burnt out. Um, I know when I got to the end of school, I was probably at that point of being burnt out. But um, that's where a really strong self-care practice is going to come in and help you to handle those sort of situations. So it's the heat of change. It's transformation through fire. And it's the connection to the yamas and the niyas. Yamas, a constant connection to practicing ahimsa, practicing satya, practicing all those other aspects of the yamas and the niyamas, those internal and external observances or rules that we're expected to follow as people who practice yoga, making sure that we don't stray for them, from them. A lot of times it would be more convenient to maybe tell a little white lie or to eat meat or something like that, but it takes that self-discipline and strengthening your self-discipline. I know, um, especially when I first became vegetarian, there were times when I went out to eat and I would feel frustrated because everything on the menu had meat in it and there was really nothing that I could eat, um, probably other than a salad. 
and in the beginning you get kind of tired of eating salad all the time when you're vegetarian. So there were those times where I definitely felt that temptation to, well, if I just get chicken, it'd be fine. Um, but I had to really think about why I was vegetarian. What was my motivation for making that decision and what was the outcome of that whole process? And then when I came back to that foundation, it gave me the self-discipline to say, okay, you know, I made this decision for a reason and I'm going to stick with it because it's really important to me that I don't cause harm to animals and that it, my dietary choices don't cause harm to the environment or to my physical health. So you just have to keep coming back to that internal source of discipline. Now, when it comes to our practice, we also have those days where um, you're tired and if you're a morning practicer, then you kind of want to hit the snooze button, stay in bed a little bit longer, not do your practice that day. Or like me, I usually practice toward the end of my day. Sometimes I'll get out of work and think, oh, I'm pretty tired today. Maybe I'll just skip my practice, go home and relax. But it's having this understanding of the process of why we practice. And it's an understanding and a faith in the practice itself that I know if I take that hour or hour and a half to do my practice and use a little bit of self-discipline and motivation to get myself onto my mat, by the end of that practice I'm going to feel so much better. I know that the practice is going to give me more energy rather than less energy. So I have faith in that process and I'm going to be a much more personable version of myself when I get to the end of that practice. I'm in that Space of being calm and content and peaceful through the process of doing my breath work and doing asanas so it's definitely worth it because I bring home a better version of myself when I do my practice than compared to when I skip it. The practice itself is this process of training your senses, training your mind to focus, training your breath to stay steady and deep even when you're in a challenging position and training your mind to have a more positive thought process and to have this commitment to the process, this commitment to watching things unfold, watching things change, seeing how everything transforms, how your practice transforms, how you as a person transform through your practice and through your life experiences watching how the fires of life and those trials and difficulties that we go through really help to shape us and mold us and in most cases make us stronger because we've gone through that experience. The practice, when we do a stronger practice and we're building heat in the body and we want to sweat and we're really trying to feel a certain amount of burn in the muscles from that effort, it's this process of burning through what holds you back. And a lot of times we have beliefs about what we can or can't do. And you wanna make sure that when you're on your mat and you're doing your practice, you're not stopping because you think you can't do something. You're stopping when you feel like maybe you're pushing yourself into a place of strain or your breath is really short and choppy. Those are the signs that you do wanna take a break and practice self-care. But there are spaces where you can work into that heat and that fire and that challenge. A lot of times in Kundalini, we do the Kriyas for multiple minutes at a time. And there's always this kind of experience during that Kriya where you hit this wall initially and you think, oh, I'm tired. I really need to take a break. I don't want to do this anymore. And then you think, well, let me just try a little bit longer. I think I can do it. Let me just keep trying. And with that sustained effort you start to get to a point where you find this new reserve of energy it's a very interesting process but that's where you want to kind of watch runners have a similar sort of experience when they're doing a long distance run they talk about hitting the wall and then if you push past that you find this extra reserve of energy so that's a lot of what we're talking about with tapas having the fire and having the self-discipline to push through when you feel that wall finding that extra reserve and that strength that you have internally. Finding internal motivation is going to serve you well in every aspect of your life. Now when we do our practice and 
we're trying to pull in this concept of tapas, of fire and transformation and building strength and discipline, we're going to do some holding in our postures, holding in chair pose so we feel that fire building up in our quads and our thighs, um, holding core work to activate the Agni and create strength through our core, which is so important for every other movement that we do with our body. We have to have a strong core. And that includes the lower back. It's everything that wraps around our midsection, the hips, the lower belly, the lower back. And sometimes we'll use multiple breaths to come into a pose that we're used to just going in and out of. So when you slow it down, it's this process of feeling the precision of the movement. But it's interesting because a lot of times when we want to do a hard practice, we think we have to move quickly. We have to do lots of vinyasas. We have to constantly move to create this sweat. But try going the other way. Try slowing your practice down really slow and precise so that as you're stepping through your lunge, you're hovering your leg, you're holding that chair or moving in and out of your chair really slowly, I guarantee you will start to feel the burn and you will start to feel the heat building up in your body when you slow your practice down. It's a very interesting change. The pranayama that we're going to do is kapla body, which is strong exhales. It's pumping the breath out with the abdominal wall and the diaphragm. Short little exhales. The mantra that we're going to use is an English mantra. It's not even in Sanskrit, but it's this phrase, sky above, earth below, fire within. It's a phrase that grounds us. So if you ever feel like you're really scattered, this is a great mantra to use. So it grounds us into that space that we always have the sky above us and the earth below us and we exist in that space in between. Within that space in between we have this fire within us that's going to give us the strength to do what we need to do. The mudra that we're going to use is the mudra of the solar plexus because this is the fire center of the body. It's our strength, it's our energy, it's what we use to burn through things. It's very close to prayer, but we tent the fingers out slightly and we cross the thumbs. For female, it's going to be left thumb on top. For male, it's going to be right thumb on top. So very close to Anjali Mudra. So I hope you can stick around and join me for the practice for tapas. It's a little bit different than our normal pace, a little bit more um, strengthening focus and a little bit more sweat than we usually get going. So thank you so much for joining me and learning about tapas. Namaste.